Good morning, everybody. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce Konrad Szymański on our seminar. Konrad did, he, did his PhD in 2022 at the Jagiellonian University in Kraków. And since he joined a group of, of Otfried Gine in Zygen, where he works on graph states and related topics. And today, Konrad is going to tell us something about reduction of noise effects in imperfect graph states. Konrad, please. All right. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, and yes, today I want to tell you about um, how physical effects manifest uh, manifest as noise in uh, in real life uh, uh, in uh, real uh, in realizations of graph states in experiments uh, and how to how to mitigate the noise or how to deal with it. So what it, what could you even use the graph states for? Um, I mean, perhaps you are familiar, perhaps not. Uh, so I will just perhaps reiterate that. Uh, there are various approaches to quantum computation. I mean, the one that perhaps is the most widely taught is the uh, circuit-based model, in which you start with some uh, pure product state, uh, you, uh, which is subsequently evolved with unitary operations and perhaps measured. And uh, from the from the results of the measurements, you read out the re the, the, the the result of the quantum computation, which uh, which is needed. Um, so that's one approach. The second would be an adiabatic quantum computation. So say you have a Hamiltonian, a very special Hamiltonian H1, uh, ground state of which encodes, also encodes a result of, uh, a result of uh, computation, which then you could measure uh, to, uh, you could measure to, uh, to know what, what its properties are. But it's somehow very hard to get to it, to the ground state. Uh, it might be a complicated system, it's, uh, non, uh, which would be non trivial to cool to such low temperatures that only the ground state has significant population. So you start with an other Hamiltonian, H, H0, H0, and then um, by the virtue of adiabatic theorem, uh, if you have prepared truly the ground state of H0 and you slowly change the Hamiltonian from H0 to H1, uh, if you do it slow enough, you will end up in the ground state of H1, which then you can measure and use as you wish. So, ground, uh, so the graph states are uh, perhaps an example of a third approach to quantum computation, which is uh, the measurement-based quantum computation. So let me just first define what they are. So they are defined by simple graphs. Uh, oh yes, but they, by the way, there aren't that many people in the audience. So, I mean, if something is unclear, you just interrupt me at any moment uh, because I think it's just the uh, easiest choice. So uh, you have a simple graph. Simple graph which means that it's undirected and the edges have no weight. So it's literally just the collection of vertices and pairs of vertices, which are the edges. So you start, uh, so you start with a plus, uh, plus x state at every qubit uh, and evolve uh, and evolve the state with a control z across every edge uh, contained in the graph. So you start with a product state like this, and then there is the control z. Uh, and what could uh, plus in the sense of uh, the plus eigen, uh, the eigenstate to the plus, uh, plus one eigen, eigenvalue of sigma x operator? So what could it be used for um, is exactly the measurement based quantum computation mentioned previously. Uh, so previous, uh, I mean, the circuit based quantum uh, circuit based model, you start with a simple state uh, and then uh, evolve it entirely. But here you start with a relatively complicated state, which is the graph state. Uh, but then the only operations you have to perform are local measurements. Uh, so, for instance, you could implement a C naught gate uh, between the target and control qubits in the following way: that you start with the larger graph state, entangle the target and control uh, to the rest of the graph, and then you measure. So you measure these two qubits in x basis. So they are 
measured independently. It's not like a x x two qubit measurement, but it's measurement of the first qubit first and second qubit second. Uh, they are like sequential measurements. You measure it in x x, and so on and so forth. And in the end, you get a measure uh, a result of the C not gate essentially. And you could build a circuit like this if it, if only you can build a robust graph state. Uh, and the thing with CNOT gate is that it's a Clifford operation. And as it turns out, uh, the Clifford operations in graph states exactly correspond to Pauli measurements. So if you only measure, uh, locally measure, like sequence of X, Y, and Zs perhaps, then the simulation of, uh, of the outcome of such an experiment is relatively simple. Uh, but on the other hand, if you allow for arbitrary measurement axis, so it's not X and Y, it's perhaps X plus Y, it's some different direction in space. If you allow for arbitrary measurement axis, you get universal, you, you get universality. You can prepare any, effectively prepare any entire at all. But for this, you have to uh, have a robust, uh, uh, robust graph state or a method of producing those. Uh, so that's uh, so yes, the graph states are defined as this uh, uh, like a product of evolution of uh, uh, plus states uh, with controlled Zs. But there is also another interesting structure contained within them because uh, well, if you start with plus state at every qubit, you could you could think about it uh, in the following way. It's rather trivial at this point, but. Uh, the initial state, the only plus state, is a uh, is an unique eigenstate uh, to all the x operators at qubits. So if all the qubits are in plus state, x at every uh, x operator at every qubit, uh, uh, so it's an eigenstate to x operator at every qubit, and controlled these modify this structure a bit in the sense that uh, there is exist a stabilizer group uh, of of some sorts, uh, so that you have um, so that you have a, a, a x operator at some qubit and z operators uh, at its neighbors, and the graph state is a plus one again state to all of these operators and all of these products. So, for instance, you have x one, z two, z four. So this would be x. This would be Z, this would be Z. It's just a Pauli string. But uh, you also get X3, Z, Z2, Z4. And if you multiply them, you get just an operator X1, X3. Uh, and this tells you about, it constrains the correlation between different qubits. Because the uh, expectation value of X1, X3 over this graph state is one, because G is just simply a, an uh, plus one eigenstate to this operator. Uh, therefore, the only observable sign structures in such a state are plus one, plus one, and minus one, minus one, if you measure these two qubits, one and three, the X basis sequential. And because any other sign structure will be incompatible uh, with this expectation value. Uh, and you can verify consistency of the graph state with the stabilizer structure this way. Uh, because if you observe plus one and minus one, it means that uh, something was off. It, perhaps an edge was missing, like in the like in the cases here, because then you would get ex expectation value of zero. The qubits would not be correlated at all. Right. And you have to verify the consistence somehow because of the effects of noise. Uh, so the graph states can be prepared on like a plethora of different platforms because uh, a relatively simple way of preparation is just control this essentially. So you could do it with ion traps in which you engineer like an Ising type Hamiltonians uh, to actually perform like control phase and control this in the end. It could be done with it's superconducting qubits. I mean, essentially you just send a series of commands to to the IBM quantum computer. It's also done with uh, photonic systems in which uh, there are also various scenarios. The single atom emitters uh, investigated at the moment in which a single atom just emits a sequence of uh, photonic qubits 
such they form a large graph state. Uh, but also you could uh, uh, you could just use spontaneous parametric down conversion, which creates uh, bell pairs. So if you, if you have two bell pairs, you can fuse the qubits. Uh, but however, you do it, you always uh, you always run into noise. So for instance, here you might not control the interaction strands very well, and your Ising type Hamiltonian isn't perfect. Uh, in photonic systems, the um, the spectra of the of the generated photons have to match really well for the entangling gate to operate at all. And in superconducting qubits, I mean, it's very hard to isolate them from the from the environment. And there is always something you have to uh, take into account. And uh, my work was how to get rid of the noise, how to mitigate it somehow. Uh, and as it turns out, all of these different contributions to noise often generate an ensemble of graph states, which is really easy to analyze. Because yes, let's go with the ion traps in which the preparation more or less works like this. So we want to generate this uh, controlled Z gate. And how you can do it is uh, by preparation of Ising type Hamiltonian. So you have something like this on the two qubits you want to, you wish to entangle, uh, uh, you wish to entangle. Uh, and during evolution with this Hamiltonian, you essentially perform a controlled phase operation. And then controlled Z is just controlled phase with the phase of pi. However, you never you, you are never able to control the interaction strength of this Hamiltonian to an arbitrary degree of accuracy, or neither you can control the interaction time. Uh, so you always like overshoot or undershoot the phase somehow, right? So if you uh, somehow pick graph if pictorially, you target for the phase of pi here, that corresponds to control Z, but there is always some spread. Uh, and if you, uh, under reasonable assumptions, uh, uh, so that the noise, uh, the noise process is centered at pi, and it's relatively symmetric. Uh, if you average over all possible realizations of phase, what you get is uh, average in the uh, in the super operator sense. What you get is a probabilistic controlled Z channel. So the uh, you remember that the uh, you remember that the controlled Z is essentially added edges to the graph. So this channel either adds the edge or not in an unheralded way because this is essentially just a, uh, just a description of knowledge uh, the end state of an operation like this physically what happens that you get is that you get a pure state in the end that's prepared with an unknown phase it's just after averaging because you don't do not know what what phase it was uh, only after that, you get a effective description of a mixture of graph states. So the noise can physically cannot be heralded. Uh, it's, uh, and it is just an effective description. Uh, a similar thing happens in photonic qubits because that, as I mentioned previously, so we start with uh, two larger graph states, perhaps, uh, perhaps just two bell pairs, which are, which are just two like elementary graphs. And uh, you want to fuse some qubits to create to create the uh, another graph state, uh, another graph state, and it's done with entangling operation and subsequent measurement of one of the qubits uh, quite frequently. So they are using these polarizing beam splitters, which are just as the name suggests, um, they are somehow uh, uh, they react different differently to different polarization. So. A polarizing beam splitter might uh, transmit horizontally uh, horizontally uh, polarized light, and the qubits are and the qubits are encoded exactly as polarization the degrees of freedom. So the spatial modes uh, the spatial modes of the light are the same, uh, but qubit is in one when it's horizontal uh, light, or qubit is in zero when it's vertical light. So polarizing beam splitter transmit horizontal light and reflects the vertically polarized light. And what happens ideally when the photons land on the polarizing splitter, so the photons A and B, 
land on the PB polarizing beam splitter at the same time uh, is that you fuse the qubits. So you have two graphs, uh, and these are the qubits A and B. You have two graphs. Uh, uh, you have uh, C and D, uh, 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 well, spatial modes as the output of a polarizing beam splitter. You measure C and measure its polarization. And upon right post selection, you end up with a A and B fused together. Uh, so this is what happens ideally if the like the spectra of the both photons A and B match perfectly. Uh, however, if the photons arrive at different time of if the spectra, uh, uh, I mean, have imperfect overlap, you don't get any fusion at all. Uh, effectively, effectively, this qubit D is uh, me uh, well measured in the Z basis, so it's flipped with a with a Pauli Z operator. But it still uh, it still results with an ensemble of graph states, which are qubits are uh, modified by a probabilistic Z flip. So previously we had in uh, it's I mean the, there are some differences, of course. That here you would get a probabilistic controlled Z gate, and here you get a probabilistic Z flip. But it's still an ensemble of stabilizer states uh, of modified graph states. And so then it's rather easy to analyze. So what I mean by ensemble is that uh, it's a probabilistic combination of different states. So you may think about it as uh, that you draw a certain pure state from a, uh, from a probability distribution. So ideally, you wish to get a pure graph state like this, right? You start with a plus, you apply control Z across every edge. Uh, but with noise, as in the first case, some edges might be missing with certain probabilities, and in the end you get a, in the end you get a mixed state of the graph states, uh, composed of the graph states which uh, which are just edge subgraphs of G with uh, with appropriate probabilities. So if they are completely independent, it could be uh, it could be just binomial essentially, uh, and what. How does it bother us exactly? Is because we want to use these graph states for something, for information transfer or for this measurement-based quantum computation. I mean, they are also uh, quite frequently uh, analyzed in the field of uh, quant uh, quantum key uh, quantum cryptography, quantum key distribution with quantum networks, uh, and that's another scenario in which uh, graph states are useful. Uh, however, for all of those things, for quantum gravitation or T distribution or whatever, you need an entanglement across different parts of the system. So let let me take a uh, let me analyze a very simple example of a bell pair preparation. Because if we have a larger graph state like this, it's just a path graph, um, and we wish to extract a bell pair across these two qubits which then could be used, for instance, for information transfer. If you have a bell pair, uh, you can, uh, if you have a bell pair, you can, uh, you can do quantum teleportation. And it is also like supported natively, so to say, on graph states. It's just by measurement. Uh, so we wish to create a really good bell pair. Uh, and we can do it in the ideal case. We can do it in the following way. We have the larger graph states. and. Uh, is we want to extract the entanglement into, into these two qubits. Just measure the qubits in Y, essentially. So the first measurement of like the central qubit does something to the neighboring qubits. I mean, it's not a purely graph states in the end. I mean, there are some local unitaries you need to take into account, but it's a minor modification. It's more or less still a graph state. Uh, then you measure all the other qubits and so on and so forth. And in the end, you get something that's also locally entirely equivalent to a bell pair, uh, which you could use for quantum teleportation, uh, just as a source of uh, just as a source of uh, really good correlation. However, this procedure, on, as you can imagine, only works if the chain here is not broken. If uh, any single link here is missing. You have no entanglement between the left and the right section of the graph. 
and you cannot possibly end with an entangled state in the end. Uh, therefore, if the path is broken and the noise is unheralded uh, because it's of different physical origin, the like ensemble of uh, graphs uh, with edges missing is just a uh, is just a, also a description of a state of knowledge. Uh, if the path is broken, nothing can be done. Uh, and this is where what uh, I've been trying to uh, what I've been trying to uh, analyze and solve. Uh, and why do we even end with a bell pair? Uh, uh, I mean, the the reason will be uh, the reason is uh, will be helpful with further further analysis because you remember the stabilizer operators. You have just a, like a five qubit path graph like this. Uh, we have the stabilizer operators which are generated by something like this. So, for instance, you could have a stabilizer operator of x1 z2 or I don't know x3 z2 z4. So these are products. These are just the entire group generated by something like this. You have a qubit v, uh, and you put so you put x on the qubit v, and you put z on every of its neighbor. Uh, and you can generate a bell pair just by measuring that uh, across one and five, just by measuring the three qubits inside in the X basis. And why is it so? It's because there exist stabilizers which kind of embed this measurement pattern structure within them. So this is the stabilizer, uh, which is simply composed of uh, well the generators put on two and four. So uh, the generator on two adds Z on one and three. Uh, then you put generator on X four and uh, the Z three term cancels out and you are left with an operator like this. And the entire initial graph state is a plus one eigenstate to this operator, to the first operator in the stabilizer. So uh, therefore, if you think about it, uh, if you measure the if you measure these three qubits in the x basis, you essentially set these the uh, effects of these operators in stone. So you end up uh, so you end up with z z correlation in the end, well, with the sign determined by what you have actually measured in the qubit two and four. Uh, so because this interpreted as a large operator was a stabilizer operator before measurement. If you have actually measured x2 and x4 qubits, uh, I mean qubits 2 and 4 in the x basis, the z1 and z5 times the sign uh, is a stabilizer operator. And the same happens for all the other operators. Therefore, they encode the post measurement of correlations z1, z5, x1, x5, and y1, y5. And these are exactly the correlations needed for a bell bar. Uh, but you can do more because they not only uh, the stabil uh, just you can analyze the stabilizer group structure and kind of infer what the post measurement correlations are, but you can also use them for uh, the stabilizer structure for probabilistic checks. So this is a more complicated graph. It's still like a length free between the initial and target qubits, so one and five. This is also like three qubits in between, sort of, but three layers of qubits between the terminal ones. And uh, similarly, as previously, we can analyze the post measurement correlations and we'll find out that they're exactly the same. So that is XX, uh, similar to this case. It's ZZ, similar to this case, and YY, also as, as previously. But for each layer, for each layer, so like layer one, layer two, and layer three of qubits, you have an additional operator, which is a, a stabilizer. And remember that you are measuring all of the qubits in the X basis. So if X, X is a stabilizer, uh, and you are measuring the qubits sequentially, independently, the only possible sign structures you could, you could observe uh, you could observe uh, a plus one, plus one, and minus one, minus one, because XX is a stabilizer, right? It's a stabilizer operator. 
the original graph state is a plus one eigenstate of, of this operator, and therefore you can only observe, ever observe something like this. And furthermore, uh, because this is a, actually a very special example, uh, not in the term of length, but in the term of this structure, uh, 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 is that if you do not detect an edge missing error, it is still corrected for because, uh, well, it's rather a, it's a rather tough point, but uh, the thing is that observe that this, uh, these stabilizer operators which determine the post measurement correlations are uh, exactly the same whether this dotted edge is here or not. And this, uh, and you can always find the uh, right post measurement correlation structure for any missing edge. Um, therefore, you may detect an error, and if you not, and if you do not detect an edge missing error, it is still corrected. Uh, well, unless it affects the terminal qubits. Uh, uh, and uh, what I've done in the paper is analyzed different noise processes uh, and different graph geometries. So as you may imagine, this is uh, this is a part graph geometry that's particularly vulnerable to noise because there are no noise connect noise detecting structures whatsoever embedded in the stabilizer group. This is one is fairly uh, is better, uh, and this one, which was one the previous example, uh, is called. Uh, I haven't invented the name. I think it was originally named by Rausendorf himself, although I'm not exactly sure. This one is called a crazy graph. It's essentially a graph uh, exactly with layers uh, of qubits and which uh, every layer is densely connected to the layers preceding and, and following. Uh, and it exactly enjoys this particular structure of, uh, of, uh, of uh, quite a lot of additional like parity checking stabilizer operators. Uh, so you wish to perhaps extract a bell pair uh, across distant qubits like this, or perhaps you wish to extract a GAZ state, a three qubit GAZ state. Uh, and as it turns out, uh, uh, yes, if the, uh, let, let's just analyze it for, uh, talk about it for the edge loss noise. Uh, so you may get this graph state, this graph state if you are lucky, but sometimes, one of the edges will be missing, or two of the edges will be missing, and if the edges are taken out independently of the graph with probability p, you will get fidel, uh, and you uh, perform the uh, the state extraction procedure, which is essentially just measurement of the of the internal qubits in the X basis uh, with post selection on the right stabilizer structure because you always observe uh, you, uh, in the in the crazy graph case uh, you always uh, you will always observe the post select only on plus plus and minus one uh, minus one minus one outcomes uh, so you observe the everything in x basis and post select when when it, uh, when it is uh, when it's possible uh, you will see that the fidelity uh, fidelity uh, of the extracted state is still reasonably high. Uh, is still reasonably high even if the uh, even uh, is still reasonably high for for low noise probabilities with the crazy graph. Exactly because you have this noise detecting and cancelling structures embedded in the stabilizer group. Because you are post selecting on observing probabilistically uh, the right state, and you can do the same thing for a three qubit JZ state. However, obviously, it's not possible for a simple path graphs like this because the you cannot detect you cannot detect there are no parity checks, so to say you cannot detect a noise happen, happening at all. Uh, so, if you have um, n layers and uh, in the low noise limit, which is what you are hoping for uh, in the in the quantum computers. Uh, you wish to, uh, you perhaps want to see how susceptible a particular state is to to noise. So, uh, well, I'm, I just defined a fidelity susceptibility as the initial fall, initial slope of this curve here. So, how fast does fidelity 
fall when you increase the noise. And for noises of like 10 to minus 3, which is rather reasonable, 10 to minus 2, uh, the initial slope is still a fairly good approximation. Uh, so uh, the uncorrelated phase noise essentially corresponds to this uh, probabilistic controlled Z setting, uh, in which the edges are present in the graph or not with some probability. And you would, uh, and if you want to see how the these graph state families are susceptible to this kind of noise, you can uh, look into this graph. So path graph, uh, so the susceptibility of path graph grows with the layer count because it's an entire family of states parameterized by the length of the graph between the terminal qubits. Uh, if you add the, uh, if you add some qubits and have this second twist graph like this you actually uh, get some noise reduction. I mean, this only exists for uh, for odd number of uh, of layers because I mean, just uh, it's slightly asymmetric as you can see. Uh, however, for the crazy graph in the low noise limit, the fidelity, uh, the, the susceptibility, so the initial fall off of uh, fidelity uh, as, an, as a reaction to noise does not depend on the on the uh, on the length at all, so you could have in the low, low noise limit, you could have a very long chain of qubits, and still be able to uh, still be able to transmit information. Have a bell pair, which could then could be used to uh, transmit information across large distances relatively well. And the same happens for like local Z flip noise. I mean, the local phase. It's essentially the thing that happens in the optical uh, optical realizations of graph states where you have this uh, probabilistic z flip and then you also have just a uh, flat response of susceptibility with respect to, uh, to to the length because in this case you can observe any error except in the terminal qubits uh, you are not observing the terminal qubits because you still want them to you still want them to be entangled and therefore, you cannot correct in the uh, in the noise in, uh, in the noise there. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, I mean, this work uh, uh, published in archive uh, and sent to Quantum uh, uh, tells you uh, this work is about how entangling gate noise, which is realized in uh, how is it observed in real life systems. Uh, corresponds to generation of en ensemble of graph states or stabilizer states and how to get rid of some of the noise with spot selection but still without the like very large overhead of full error correcting codes and this all is possible by still leveraging some of the structure of stabilizer uh, of the stabilizer group uh, just because you expect some correlations to appear and if they are not there you know that the state is uh, was uh, prepared in a wrong way, and sometimes, uh, sometimes the, uh, sometimes the, even if you don't observe the noise, you can still correct for it. Uh, and in the in the future, I would like to generalize it to non-Pauli operations. Although I'm not sure if that's uh, if that's possible, I'm investigating the few qubit cases right now. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Comrade, for your talk. And now it's time for questions and uh, or remarks. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Hi. Uh, I have a question, and it will be a longer one. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but I will indulge myself since we have some time. Uh, so, from what I understand, uh, the error correction, like not error correction, but like no noise resistance, mostly comes from the if you have the kind of uh, parity check structure in yes. your graph. Yes. So, but then your uh, parity check comes from multiplying like two generators maybe together, right? It's not like you check one generator; you you have to kind of multiply those generators. Yes, in this setting, yes. Yeah. That's uh, but you could do something, I think, alternative because, like, if you actually care about parity check, mm -hmm. then you could apply Hadamard to some 
to, to some vertices and then basically you get a reduced state and i i noticed that the, for example the crazy graph i think it's two color uh, you can two color it and uh, this would yes. allow so, you to kind of uh, yeah so hadamard operation essentially is just like a lo local unitary i'm not sure if it would yes. actually change anything in the, in it would the, reduce the amount of states that you have. So, uh, so like gra the graph state always, uh, like uh, the graph state is always in the kind of regular yes. basis. It has all the terms. Yes. But if uh, there is a there is this thing that if you actually can ha rotate operators such that one operator contains only oh. z's or x's, then oh. you reduce the number of you just want to create uh, you just want to create a lc equivalent uh, perhaps or a LU yes. equivalent of this so, so so what i'm saying is that okay if you actually parity helps you then maybe you don't even have to worry about like multiplying those uh, operators together you just kind of measure in a different basis i still and, think it, I, I still think it helps me uh, exactly because uh, i mean this uh, this graph uh, behaves much better than the linear one. I mean, in the end, you have to have n layers. I mean, you can escape it with local unitary as a whole. Uh, and if you even add edges, which you might you might think is uh, uh, also, uh, like adds more, uh, more only adds more problems because there are more possibilities for for errors. Uh, yeah. It's still somehow is better and even independent of length. Uh, so um, yes. Like uh, I'm not sure if I understand correctly that you just want to create like exactly the LC or LU equivalent graph state and use this as a simpler one. I so still... I, 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 what I mean is like okay. here the the structure I think what what helps you here is that mm -hmm. like you can actually to color if you go through the crazy uh, the crazy graph you can yes. set oh this is one color then second and yes. stuff like that and depending on the color you actually uh, either apply or not do not apply uh, Hadamard. And from what I understand, like the parity check is something which helps you. And in that way, you can actually reduce all this like regular stabilizing operators to either be on uh, Z, Z operators or X operators, like tensor products of Z times identity and X times identity. So if it's actually this kind of quality that you are after, then maybe mm -hmm. there are kind of more ways of uh, gaining that, but maybe I, I'm I just misunderstanding something and yeah. Uh, it is possible. I mean, uh, that you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, thank you. Are there any questions or comments? I can't see, so let me ask one question. Uh, have you tried some real quantum machine simulations? To. Oh, no, not really. I tried. I tried running the IBM, uh, the Qiskit library, mm -hmm. uh, but. It was just a. It, it was just horrible. I'm not sure how is it written at all, but uh, uh, I mean the the API was just uh, was just too much. Some functions take qubits in one order, the other functions take qubits in the reverse order, and in the end, uh, in the end, it was just too, too complicated to to run the uh, to run it on the real quantum machine. That's all. But. Uh, some experimentalists recently sent uh, uh, recently sent a, uh, a quick note about how they can prepare a graph state. Uh, I mean, exactly these optical graph states, and uh, I, I'll probably be contacting them and and seeing what can be done on the very simplified setup because they what they can do is like have like five or six optical qubits. So I will try to do this and very simplified baby version of it on real life quantum devices but but not on a simulator okay thank you are there any questions if no one has a question i have one more uh, mm -hmm. to Please. what you Please. said at the end uh, what do you, what did you mean about like non pauli operators uh, you mean the higher dimensional or like general operators general local operators so okay. Uh, yes, so you know that you can generate any, like, this would be a one qubit unitary, but if you can, yes. if for a more complicated graph, uh, if you can, uh, if you can measure the uh, individual qubits in, 
uh, you, you can measure the individual qubits in uh, arbitrary basis. You can perform arbitrary uh, arbitrary counter operations. So I would like to essentially have the same structure. It wouldn't be a stabilizer, of course, because stabilizer uh -huh. is discrete also. But uh, I'm wondering if it's possible to still have a, a sort of stabilizer, not really, but um, it's a parity check structures. Okay. Uh, uh, which still would do useful non Clifford operations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, uh, on the level of uh, wait, so the idea would be not to act on the graph states anymore or still on graph states, but so with you different would, measurements. So, so you'd start with graph states, yes, okay, but, but like you, you act with something, those, general. yes, okay. but you wouldn't, but you wouldn't uh, uh, measure those in X basis, but perhaps something more complicated okay, 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 okay. and check the. If the correlations you see in the end results match uh, yeah. what you expect. Okay, thank you. I cannot see any more questions mm -hmm. or any more any more remarks. So, Conrad, thank you very much for your talk. Thank you. And thank you everybody for attending the seminar. And see you guys next time. <laughs>